These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Is that? Page All right, so to save space, I'll abbreviate the benzene rings as phenyl groups. I can, that's a useful trick in working through problems. Uh, so let's see, this is a five step synthesis problem. We need to add reagents in five steps. steps. Oh, yeah, five steps or less. Good point. All right, so we have to do this synthesis in five steps or less. All right, well, what were your thoughts about this? I remember that if you did D2 and PDC, you can attach um, deuterium to this both ends of a double bond. Yeah. And that's what it looks like it did there. Yep. But somehow we have to create a double bond um, on one part of the, because they did it for here and here, so it makes sense for it to be like that, but that doesn't make sense at all. So. Uh. So um, one thing that it looks like we want to do is a kind of hydrogenation, except using deuterium. Now, when these deuteriums attack a double bond, this is a reaction you saw last term. Do you remember, is this a sin or an anti-addition? Do the two deuteriums come in from the same direction or opposite directions? Same. Remember the reason for that is that the two deuteriums are going to be attached to the same speck of palladium. So they should be coming in from the same direction since they're coming in from that same speck. So if one deuterium, uh, and that's good because we want a syn addition. We want the two uh, deuteriums to both be on the same side here. So we can draw the two deuteriums coming in like this, and that would push this phenyl group out like this. So that seems like one of the steps that we're going to need. And uh, you can also draw in the hidden hydrogen here. That's also gotten pushed up. So we've accomplished one of the changes that we need to make. Now the other change that we need to make is we need to remove this hydrogen and replace this with a deuterium. OK. Uh, well, let's see. The first thing that we need to notice here is it seems like it's going to be difficult to work with this atom because it has no functional groups. There's not much we can do with an atom that doesn't have any functional groups. In fact, there's just about only one or two things we've learned that you can do with atoms with no functional groups. The only thing you can do with an atom with no functional groups, well, you've got to introduce a functional group. And the way we do that is radical halogenation. Radical halogenation is just about the only technique that we've learned for introducing a functional group where there weren't any functional groups in the first place. Um, so um, we want to do a radical halogenation reaction. Uh, and that should ring a bell because you guys learned about radical halogenation last term, but you just learned about a new type of radical halogenation. You just learned about allylic halogenation. Um, we've learned that it's very easy to halogenate an allylic carbon. That's uh, very selective, uh, which indicates we should probably do that first while we still have the double bond. So we should notice that this carbon here is the allylic carbon. So this would be a really good candidate for allylic halogenation. Um, we can't wait till this step to do the allylic halogenation because the double bond is gone now. So we need to do the allylic halogenation in this first step. Does that make sense why we'd want to halogenate this carbon? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's back up and try again. Let's halogenate this carbon. Do you guys remember what reagent we need to add to halogenate this? Mm. Sorry? Would you use MG? Magnesium? You might be thinking maybe about a Grignard reagents or something like that. 
Um, now, in this case, we're not going to use a grid yard. For amylic collagenation, we use NBS. All right, that would be a good thing for us to talk about. Okay. So, well, this is what it does. NBS is only used for allylic collagenation. The only thing you're going to use NBS for is allylic collagenation. so we can review uh, the mechanism for that. This is actually kind of a complicated mechanism, but uh, I think for your class, it's good enough just to think about NBS as a source of BR2. And then what happens at the beginning of radical reactions is an initiation step where you form radicals. So here we have two initiation steps. The NBS is a source of BR2. We won't worry about the mechanism for that step. And now, the rest of the mechanism, we can just draw the same as radical halogenation from the first semester. Radical halogenation in the first semester, first the bromine formed radicals. Then that radical, steals a hydrogen. A radical steals a hydrogen. Remember, what do we want to have happen here overall? Overall, this is going to be a substitution reaction, where we're going to remove the hydrogen and replace it with the bromine. So it makes sense that the first thing we have to do is remove the hydrogen. So when you're writing the steps, you would just put NBS, or do you have to put the bromines there, too? Or it's just implied that the bromine's there? I don't know if I understood your question. Like, when you're writing these steps, oh, yeah. you just put NBS? You just write NBS. That's right. You just write NBS. All we're doing now is reviewing the mechanism. You don't need to write the mechanism for a synthesis problem, of course, but you'll, there'll be other problems where you need okay. to know the mechanism. I didn't know if you had to put like yeah. BR. Yeah. So for a synthesis problem, all you have to do is in the first box, write NBS. Uh, but uh, if the problem also asks you for the mechanism, you would show that the NBS is forming the BR2. Uh, so that gives us BRH. So notice that that now makes this into a radical, because it's lost its hydrogen. That's what we call propagation step one. Now, at this step, um, we put in another bromine. Again, we could think of the NBS as providing a source of bromines. We could say there's another bromine here. Remember that overall, what we're going to be doing is replacing the hydrogen with a bromine. So it makes sense that in the first step, we take off the hydrogen, and in the second step, we add a bromine. propagation step two. And now since we produced a bromine radical, we could go back and do another propagation step one. Generally, when we're writing radical mechanisms, we don't write the termination step unless the problem asks us for it, because we can get the main product right out here at the propagation. So here's the basic mechanism. These three steps are the same as for radical halogenation from last term. The only thing that's new is using NBS as the source of BR2. So different, different textbooks write this mechanism different ways, but I think your instructor writes it this way. 